Hello, welcome back to this video. This is 7-3. We are talking derivatives of inverse functions, and I'm here with with Miss Ella. Say hi, Ella. Say hi. Hi, Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna teach him some math, okay? Ella, are you a cow? No. Are you a dog? Are you a dog? No. You're not. Are you you? Are you you? No. You're not you. Hmm. All right, well, let's go ahead and get to it. Say bye, Ella. Bye, Ella. All right, here you go. Say ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, circuses. Is that Santa? Yeah. Does Santa say ho, ho, ho? Ho, circuses. All right. Oh, oh, there's another Ella. All right. Bye, Ella. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get to the, the second part of, of this video. All right. This thing, if I can figure it out, Ella's pushing buttons over here. Ah, okay, all right. So um, if the function f has an inverse function, then f is one to one. And uh, if a function is one to one, then it must be either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, which we know is monotonic. Okay, so um, we can use f prime to figure out is the function increasing or where is a function decreasing. So example three, here it says use f prime of x to show that f of x equals 6x minus x cubed is not one to one on its entire domain. Well, if a function is one to one, then um, it's going to be monotonic. Okay, so what we can do is we can go ahead and identify see if I can do this. Is this function strictly increasing or decreasing? You want to help? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, wow. Pretty. Hold on. Let's erase this. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so f prime is 6 minus 3 times x squared. Okay, and we're going to set this equal to 0, which means that 6 is equal to to 3x squared, which means 2 is equal to x squared, which means x is equal to, oh, don't write with that pen, babe, x equals plus or minus root 2. Man. Oh, okay. So root 2. All right. So we have f prime, and that is negative root 2 and root two. Okay, so I know that our function, um, we can have possible uh, relative maxes and mins here, and we need to go ahead and identify, okay, um, is it strictly monotonic um, or, or not? So if we analyze this, we get negative, positive, negative, which means that our function is decreasing and then increasing and then decreasing. Okay, so therefore, since our function is increasing, decreasing, uh, or sorry, decreasing, increasing, and then decreasing, we know that f is not one-to-one. -one. Not one-to-one. -one. All right? So part B, it says find the largest interval containing x equals zero for which f is one-to-one. -one. So on this interval, where is zero? Well, zero is going to be right here, okay? So, thus, uh, that is negative root 2 to root 2. Okay, uh, find the largest interval containing x equals negative 2, for which f has an inverse function. So, for it to have an inverse function, it must be monotonic, right, to be to be 1 to 1. So, um, we have to identify, okay, where is negative 2? Well, negative 2 is over here. So, that interval is going to be from negative infinity to negative root 2. Okay, and there you have it. That is it. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed Ella visiting you. Catch you next time. Peace. Santa.